Alright hey guys and welcome back to another video review. Today's a little bit of a different review compared to what you're usually used to seeing on my channel as I'm not going to be reviewing a plush, a figure or even a toy. Today I'm going to be reviewing this video game magazine here which is called Sega Archives The Ultimate Collector's Guide to Classic Sega. Now I use the word magazine pretty loosely because this is actually more like a book. It is a very much beast of a video game magazine as you can see it's got a lot of pages here. Now this is pretty newly released book it's only been out about three weeks um, or at least I have only seen it in the shops for about three weeks I picked this up at um, the airport actually nonetheless and um, you can pick this up in WH Smith's and I believe I've seen it in some of the largest supermarkets such as the bigger Tesco's, Sainsbury's and Asda but you'd probably be able to pick this up pretty easily online maybe even eBay there might be some copies of it on there but um, yeah this is a really really cool magazine and if you're a fan of anything Sega or the, even the older Sega stuff you will absolutely love this book and it will take you down a, a really wonderful nostalgic uh, trip to uh, your childhood if you was very much a Sega guy like I uh, definitely was in the early 90s and um, I've got a lot of love for video game magazines themselves they're not really that around or even popular to today's market and I can understand why with the rise of the internet you kind of don't really need video game magazines because if you want the latest news or the latest updates you can just lift your uh, laptop up or if you've got a desktop type in something in Google or any of the other big uh, video game websites out there IGN GameSpot and you can find literally what you're after on there and um, as a result there's not really many video game magazines that are around in today's uh, today's time. Um, I'm only pretty familiar with, uh, at least in England, you've got the official PlayStation magazine and there's an official uh, Xbox and there's Games Master and as far as I'm aware that is pretty much it. There is no Nintendo magazine uh, anymore in the United Kingdom and I believe in America, was it Nintendo Power you had? I believe that uh, got cancelled as well. Um, if I'm wrong, please correct me in the comments because uh, I'd be interested to know. But there is one other magazine that um, you can pick up from such as the WH Smiths and it's called Retro Gamer. And you've got a logo here and this actually magazine is from the makers of Retro Gamer as you can see it there. And their magazine basically, well you can pretty much tell from the name itself, it covers more of uh, the older series games from anything from like it doesn't just cover Sega or Nintendo even, you're going back to like the old Atari, the old PCs and uh, it's a really cool uh, magazine, I, I would definitely like to pick more of them up it's a shame they're not exactly terribly cheap, I think each magazine is about £5 so it can get expensive if, you buy, expensive, sorry, if you're buying them every month but um, they do have a couple of pages in there where they review some of the uh, more recent release games so it's got a bit in there for everyone but anyway yeah so this book so the makers of retro gamer have released this which is like an ultimate compilation of all things sega and it is a really cool book i'm going to take you through it quickly i'm not going to go through everything otherwise this is going to turn into like a two hour video and i don't think anyone wants to sit there and uh, listen to me for two hours but um yeah the front cover art of this magazine is is kind of what drew my attention when I saw this in the shop because it looks really cool. Obviously you've got the, as I've mentioned before, probably the most famous image of Sonic the Hedgehog ever. This one right here, this illustration of him here, which is from, you probably already know if you know anything about Sonic, the box art cover of Sonic 1 on the Mega Drive slash Genesis. And you've also got the Sega systems here, you've got the Master System 1, the Mega Drive, uh, I believe that's the Mega Drive 1, yes it is. Uh, the Dreamcast and the Sega Saturn. Now I absolutely love all four of these systems, and uh, they, I, I can't tell you how much I, I love these systems. It's just such a shame that there is no uh, Sega console in today's age. I mean, I'll be totally honest with you. I'm not a huge fan of the current Sega product of today. It's just not. I'm just not. Um, I don't hate it, I, I like it, but I'm just not as much a fan as it as I was back then. Uh, yeah, you've got all various screenshots here from various other popular Sega games. You've got the Game Gear there, another handheld system I really love. In fact, it was the very first handheld I ever had. And I didn't, uh, before the Game Boy even. 
But yeah, that's enough about the uh, cover. I'll just shade it back quickly, but we'll come to that. Let's give you a little flick through of what this magazine has inside. Okay, so I'm going to change position here with the camera and get straight in. First of all, we have an introduction here on page one. I'm just going to read this out quickly to you. It says, since its origins as service games in the 1940s, Sega has been one of the most influential players in gaming history. From arcades filled with sit-down cabs, market-dominating consoles, an iconic mascot in Sonic the Hedgehog and everything in between. Sega has certainly had its ups and downs. Sega brought so many new things to the gaming world, including downloadable games way back in 1994, and a motion sensing controller called the Sega Activator. The Mega Drive, known as the Genesis in North America, sold a staggering 30 million units. But Sega's hopes and dreams came trashing down around its ears with the Dreamcast's disappointing launch in 1998. It marked the company's final foray into home consoles and ushered in the era of the third party software development for other gaming platforms. With Sega Archive, you can relive Sega's colourful history from early coin op capers and abandoning of the Master System's first mascot, Alex Kidd, to the gamble and subsequent failure of the Mega CD and the Mega Drive 32X. We've scoured the Retro Gamer archives to bring you an amazingly in depth articles on some of Sega's biggest games and franchises, as well as looking at the home consoles and the perfect way to celebrate Sega's timeless achievements. So pretty cool, so we're going to get straight in here, this is already going on quite long this video already. We've got a bit of contents here of what you uh, can expect to see in this magazine. Just pause the video at any time if you want to read any of these bits. So we start off here with the history of Sega, obviously it makes sense, the beginning of the book. some bit here some of the key staff to Sega's success you might recognize a few of these names you've got Yuji Naka there of course if you're a fan of Sonic the Hedgehog then you should definitely know who that is there's plenty of trivia in this book as well facts and uh, this bit here this is pretty cool this was actually a poll that they did on um, the favourite Sega controller out of all the systems they released and it was voted that the Sega Saturn Japanese version controller was voted the best with 43% of the votes. I believe second place was the Dreamcast followed by the Mega Drive followed by the Mega Drive 6 button controller and the Western version of the Sega Saturn. I've got to admit I wasn't a big fan of the Western version of the Sega Saturn uh, the controller that is, sorry. Um, they did release uh, a Knight's 3D analog controller a few years into the console's uh, life, and I was very much a big fan of that. In fact, it was one of the very first console uh, controllers I held that actually had an analog stick. Really cool. As you can see, here's a bit about they're talking about their uh, opinions on the best controller. I've got to admit, the Japanese one does look really cool. It had a much far superior D-pad. The D-pad on the European Western Sega Saturn controller was, it was terrible. You can see there, it was very flimsy. Got franchise starters for Sega's history. Of course, Sonic the Hedgehog there. Some of the notable add-ons. I never actually had the 3D glasses. I remember seeing them on sale. I also never had the TV tuner. It was really expensive back when the Game Gear was out. So I was never able to pick it up. Um, I do have a Mega CD and 32X. Never had the channel adapter. As you can see, it says here the sales for it were pretty abysmal, 250,000. It sounds a lot, but when you think of it as a, uh, a company like Sega, you can see why it failed, especially the 32X. Look, only 665,000. Even the Mega CD, which was deemed a failure, that sold 2.2 uh, million. Master System, I've got a lot of nostalgic love for the Master System, it's probably my most, my most loved nostalgic console uh, of all time, it's the very first system I've ever had. Um, I believe I got it for Christmas, probably 93, maybe, and it had Alex the Kid in Miracle World built in it, it was probably, that was the first ever game I ever played, 
and I've got a lot of love for that game as well. That game is absolutely brilliant. I really recommend checking it out. It's an absolute fantastic platformer. And I believe the second uh, game I ever got for it was Sonic the Hedgehog 1. I actually played the Master System version before the Mega Drive version. And also in this magazine they give you their opinions of the uh, top 25 uh, games for that system. Uh, I can't say I agree with everything they've got in here for their top 25s, because at the end of the day it's, it's all opinions and everyone has different tastes and other people have got more nostalgic love for other games than others. I can't say I ever played any of these ones on the Master System. Uh, we've got some here. The Ninja, absolutely loved that game, but it was incredibly hard. In fact, it even says here how tough it was. The difficulty on that game is it's, it's brutal. Uh, Alex Kidding Shinobi World, I uh, really loved that game as well. And here is Sonic the Hedgehog 1. I'm a big fan of this version of the Sonic the Hedgehog 1 because um, a lot of people in today's today's age they'll probably think it's just a basic port for the Mega Drive one, but it's not. It's its own game. It has uh, some exclusive levels that you don't have in um, the Mega Drive one, such as Sky Bridge. And all the levels placements are all different. It's got a different boss as well compared to the uh, Mega Drive one. It's a completely it's it's its own game, and it should definitely not uh, be compared as uh, like the weaker version compared to the uh, Mega Drive one. Because like I said, it's its own game. They've put it in third place. Um, and yeah, Alex the Kid in Miracle World. Uh, they've placed it second. Personally, I'd put this as first. It's definitely, I'd say, my favourite Master System game. Probably followed by Sonic the Hedgehog 1. I know Wonder Boy has a huge following, but I've never actually played the game. Otherwise, maybe I would have put it first. It's strange they didn't actually have Sonic the Hedgehog 2 or Sonic Chaos on here, because they were definitely cool games as well. Here's a huge article on Wonder Boy 3. Gaming's Greatest Underdogs. Here's a huge article on Alex the Kid. Alex Kid of Miracle World, I absolutely love that game. It's pretty funny because in the Western uh, release, uh, at the end of the levels on Alex the Kid of Miracle World, <coughs> he eats something, signifying that's the end of the level. On the Japanese version, I believe it's a rice ball, but they changed it to a hamburger for the Western release, which is pretty cool because it's, it's more uh, common, I suppose, for the Western market to eat a hamburger. This is apparently a fan-made game that's being created, or was being created, Alex Kidd in HD World. It was pretty cool, but according to this, it says it's not going to be released. <coughs> Which is a shame. Here's some arcades. I had a really great time visiting some of the Sega arcades in Japan. There's plenty for out there. There are some very old classic uh, Sega games out there. And we have a huge arc on Sonic the Hedgehog here, which you'd expect because, let's face it, Sonic the Hedgehog is Sega's most um, famous and probably profitable franchise from the company. <coughs> We've even got some of the merchandise bits here, which is pretty cool. Must have merchandise. Sonic's timeline. <coughs> I'm not going to go through all of this because otherwise you'll be here absolutely ages. See a lot of um, a lot about Sonic. This is pretty interesting. You've got some Sonic cameos in uh, other games that weren't actually some of these. Some of these, sorry, weren't actually uh, Sega games. You've got Donkey Kong, uh, Donkey Kong Country 2 there. The infamous pair of Sonic shoes, on the bottom right, and of course, quite notable uh, Super Smash Bros. Brawl. I mean, today's way, today's age, yeah, it's pretty common to see Sonic appearing in other games as cameo appearances, but back in like the 90s, it was like unheard of to see like a Sega character appearing in another game that's not non-Sega related. And now we get to the Mega Drive, which is uh, most doubtably Sega's most uh, best-selling and probably most popular system of all time. 
hold a staggering amount of systems in America and also Europe. You've got some of their big notable games here, Streets of Rage, absolutely love that series. Shinobi, another classic, very hard game there. Here's some very old magazines from back in the 90s, really cool. And here's their top 25 Mega Drive games. Again, I'm probably not going to agree with like what they've got for their top 25. But you may not either, or you may well agree. I'm going to show you here. I'm stuck from 25. Toe Jam and Earl, I never actually played that game. Golden Axe, that's absolutely, uh, it's a classic. And if you've, if you've got a Mega Drive, then you must have played Golden Axe. It's one of their most... Uh, it's one of their most well-known games for the system and I recently did play it uh, while in Japan at the arcade the Japanese version which is pretty cool is that Dynamite Heady? I never actually played that one Streets of Rage here you knew that game was going to be higher but personally I think the second one is my favourite that's probably going to be quite high on this list uh, Road Rash 2, I'm not a big racing fan but I absolutely loved this game back in the day the fact that you could actually go down you could hit other drivers with weapons and then you'd be chased by the police it was brilliant, I believe they, the last one they released was probably on the Playstation about 20 years ago um, Sonic the Hedgehog 3 Sonic the Hedgehog 1 4 Gunstar Heroes Controversial, they've got Sonic the Job 2 as second, and they've got Streets of Rage 2 as first. Now, I love Streets of Rage 2, and I think it's a, it's a brilliant beat em up and quite flawless, but I wouldn't say it's my favourite Mega Drive game of all time. It'd be very hard to choose. It's quite funny, they don't actually have Sonic and Knuckles in this top 25 unless they're including Sonic the Job 3 as that. Personally, my favourite Sonic game of all time is Sonic 3 and Knuckles. of Shinobi. Sorry, I do apologise that the camera's shaking a bit. My uh, legs are falling asleep here in this position. Road Rash, as I was just saying. I'd love to see this return to the modern gaming age. Maybe a brand new Road Rash game. Yeah. And now we come to Sega's Big Gamble, and some of these definitely did not pay off for the system. As you can see we've got the Mega Drive uh, Mega CD2 here which was the add-on for it and also the Mega Drive 32X which has become incredibly rare to find in good condition and um, well, in fully working order. They go for quite a pretty penny now on eBay. See a lot of powers. I think if I remember rightly, you needed two huge plugs to power the Mega Mega Drive and the Mega CD at the same time. And if you was powering the uh, Mega 32X at the same time, you probably need a third plug. As you can see, it does look pretty cool. It all sitting in there at one. It's like a big monster system there. Power base converter. Oh, I never actually had that. So you could play Master System games on. Um, Mega Drive. Uh, I believe they did release uh, a converter for the Mega Drive version 2, but it's quite expensive to get a hold of now. And this is probably one of the most expensive Sega systems to get hold of, which I believe, as it says here, uh, the, Mega, the Sega Genesis CDX which if I remember rightly can play Mega Drive games and Mega CD games and it was quite a small Sega system, like it was pretty compact, you can see that it looks quite small and if I recall you could actually play CDs on it and you could take it with you while you're listening to music and you might be thinking like, well that's nothing to today's age because pretty much everything you can have on your phone but back then that was pretty unprecedented to actually have a CD player any system that you could take around however the system was incredibly heavy so you would not have been able to fit it in your pocket and it would have weighed you down completely and the system was very very expensive so it's not the sort of thing you would have wanted to have uh, carried around with you I'm sure it was around four to five hundred pound at the time here's an article on 
attributes of rage. Really cool, um, cool game series. This is pretty cool. You got a bit of a reference here to Sonic the Comics Streets of Rage strips here. Golden Axe, as I just spoke about earlier. Brilliant game. In my opinion, the first one's the best. Got here all the various uh, interesting covers that Golden Axe one had. sequels. I do like the sequels. I played them uh, a few years ago when they released the Mega Drive compilation on the Xbox 360 and PS3. It was the first time I ever had the chance to play them and I was really impressed with them. Golden Axe 3. I never did play the 2008 one. I heard it was quite abysmal so that's probably why I never picked it up. And now we come to the Sega Saturn. Uh, without me trying to repeat myself, as I said, I really do love the Sega systems, but the Sega Saturn was apt. I just was blown away with the system when uh, it was released. It was quite expensive at the time when it came out, but uh, I was so glad when I finally was able to get one. I was a little bit disappointed with the fact that um, it did lack original Sonic games, but I was still really impressed with uh, what it had on the system. Games like House of the Dead, Guardian Heroes, Virtual One, uh, Clockwork Knight, uh, Marvel Super Heroes, Daytona, Sega Rally, Toko Racing. Okay, here's a little bit of an article of the difference in the control pads between the Western and the Japanese. You can see, the Japanese one is far superior. I don't know why they couldn't have just used that one. It might have been some sort of copyright or something. I don't know. It's pretty cool, you've got the specs of the PlayStation Saturn and the N64. So if you're interested in comparing them. <laughs> the Dreamcast gets quite a lot of love, but I would probably say the Sega Saturn's probably one of the most underrated systems of all time. There were so many games from Japan that never got a Western release. Here's some of the many different versions that were released of the Saturn. It had a lot of releases. Sonic Stamp one, that's pretty uh, expensive to get hold of now. Oh, Virtual Fighter, I can't forget mentioning that one. That was another one of their big ones. Got Dead or Alive, Sonic R. I really did enjoy Sonic R. Say what you will about it, but I did enjoy the music. and It was a really fun multiplayer game to play back in the 90s. I it was one of the very first games you could actually play as a... Uh, Dr. Robotnik as well, so that was really cool. Sonic Jam, Essential Saturn Imports. And here's their top 25 Sega Saturn games. So they've actually put Sonic R as 24, which is pretty surprising that they even put it on this list because this game gets an incredible amount of hate and I don't know why, as I just said, I enjoy the game. I also did enjoy Sonic Jam, which was the compilation of the Mega Drive Sonic games, but it also did have a 3D world part. Absolutely love playing that. Going around and watching all the film, uh, the movies that they've got in there. There was an art gallery. It was a really cool game. If you was a Sonic fan, in the mid to late 90s, you would have been in Game in Heaven. Die, Die Hard Arcade, that was a really cool game as well. It's sort of like the prequel to Dynamite Cop. If you ever played that on the... Dreamcast. Didn't really have anything to do with Die Hard at all, it was just called Die Hard Arcade and it was just like a side scroll. I feel like Streets of Rage. Virtual Cop 2, brilliant game, Daytona. There's Virtual Fighter 2, Street Fighter Alpha 2, the first Virtual Cop. Panzar Dragoon, that's got a huge following. And now the top three. Now they've got Sega Rally Championship. Did I forget to mention that earlier? No, I think I did mention that. And I definitely put that in the top five. It's a revolutionary uh, racing game. And the graphics at the time, I mean, it looks dated there, but that was about 96, 97. That was state-of-the-art graphics. It was one year out, it said 95 there. And the whole uh, part with the, the, the dude sitting next to you saying, easy right, easy left. This is brilliant stuff. Personally, if I had to say, 
the best Sonic, uh, sorry, sorry, not Sonic game, the best Sega Saturn game. I'm probably going to go with Guardian Heroes, which they put third here. That game, I spent so many hours playing that game back in the 90s, absolutely brilliant. And they re-released it as well, uh, a few a HD version, um, about five or six years ago on the Xbox 360, and that's really fantastic as well. I would totally recommend you going back, going on the Xbox shop and having a look and downloading that one. It's an absolutely fantastic side scroll. It's like a side scroll in Imagine Streets of Rage, but um, it's got RPG elements to it as well. And the style of the game is very anime, anime-ish, and it's just an absolute beautiful game to play. It's also got about six or seven different endings. Okay, so we've got a huge article here on Virtual Fighter. Panzer Dragoon. Outrun, another classic Sega. Really enjoyed playing this one. And now we come to the Dreamcast. And um, <coughs> another system I very much love. I did get this for Christmas in the year of 1999. And um, I got it with uh, Sonic Adventure 1, Soul Calibur, and the House of the Dead 2. Three absolutely uh, brilliant games. In fact, Sonic Adventure 1 is my second favourite Sonic game of all time. First being Sonic 3 and Knuckles. I have a lot of love for that game. It's just such a shame that the uh, Dreamcast life uh, was cut short. I uh, remember this. Here's the infamous Sega advert they put out when there was a shortage of PlayStation 2s uh, in the shops. So they took a a bit of fun at them there, it's pretty cool. Sega weren't afraid of uh, poking fun at its competition back in the day. And now we come to their top 25 Dreamcast games. Toy Commander, that was one of their launch titles I believe, that was a pretty cool game. Dynamite Cop as I've mentioned, good game. Typing of the Dead, it's basically the house of the dead but you use a keyboard and you type words to defeat the zombies. Sounds weird but pretty fun. Virtual Tennis 2, Marvel vs. Capcom 2, absolute fantastic game, it's probably my favourite fighting game of all time. Here's Sonic Adventure 1 when they've got it pretty high on the list so I don't really agree with that. But I understand that Sonic Adventure 2 is probably more so people's favourites. There's a lot of Shadow the Hedgehog fans out there. Power Stone 2, pretty a very much underrated Capcom fighting game. It did get re-released a few years ago as a compilation of Power Stone 1 and 2 on the PSP. So if you've got that, I'd recommend picking it up. Resident Evil Co. Veronica. Brilliant game. I'm a huge Resident Evil fan. And uh, this at the time was one of the best looking games you could possibly get of, at that time on any system. It looked absolutely beautiful. Soul Calibur, there's House of the Dead 2, they put it a second there which is pretty amazing that they put it that higher. It's definitely the best House of the Dead 2, uh, sorry not, the, it's the best House of the Dead game out of the series and there's been five games for the series. Crazy Taxi and Sky, Skies of Arcadia, I do, do have that game but I've not had the time to actually get into it properly. It was also re-released on the GameCube. You've got Res. Not many people ever heard about this game because it was released quite late into the system's life. And they've got Shimmy 1 and 2 here, so they haven't actually got Sonic Adventure 2 in this list quite high up. Well, actually, sorry, not high up. It's not actually in this list at all. And um, I'll be honest, I've never actually played Shimmy 1 or 2. It's a series I have definitely got to get the time to play in one day, especially with the third one coming out in the near future. There was a Kickstarter not too long ago, wasn't there? And there's a huge arc on Shimmy. I believe at the time it was the most expensive video game ever made. Here's a bit about Shinji 3. It was a huge gamble for Sega and they lost a lot of money with it. As you can see it says here, if every Dreamcast owner had purchased the copy, the production still would have lost money. And that's pretty incredible when you think about that. Crazy Taxi Art Call, brilliant game. Really did love the soundtrack to this one by... Um, what was the soundtrack? Who, who did it? Was it The Offspring? I think it was. 
Crazy Taxi 2 was pretty fun. Never did play the third one, it was only released on the Xbox. Twenty Sega games you've never played, so it'll be interesting to see anyone reading the comments, uh, anyone replying to this video. Sorry if you've ever played any of these games. Confidential Mission, I did have that one. Very good game, a bit like House of the Dead, but uh, you was a secret agent and you had to stop a terrorist from literally destroying the world. Cool game. Ghost Squad, I have played that one. I, it was released on the Wii, and I actually do have that one in my collection. Again, it's another on rail shooter type game. Ninja Garden, Golden Act, The Revenge of Death Adder, Burning Rages. I'm surprised that's there, I thought that was quite a well known game. Uh, Sega Gaga, I can't say I've ever heard of that one. It looks pretty interesting and Sega games that never made it. Ninja Garden on the Mega Drive, Sega Udisoft, Flashpoint and Sonic Crackers. Pretty cool. And we have an article on House of the Dead 2, or at least the last one. And here's an advertisement for the Retro Gamer magazine. And on the back part of this book, some more screenshots from a famous Sega game series, Sega archives, inside the hardware, 20 Sega games you've never played, the history of Sonic the Hedgehog. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much the magazine. I gotta admit, um, there's one point I would like to make that's a little bit disappointing. The game gear is pretty much not featured in this magazine at all. Yeah, it's on the back, the back and the front of it. So that's a little bit of a shame. They could have thrown a few pages, um, thrown some love for the Sega Game Gear. I really do love the Game Gear. A lot of good games on it. Sonic Triple Trouble, uh, Sonic Chaos, uh, Dracula, even the Streets of Rage. Uh, the Lion King was actually a really cool game on it, believe it or not. Uh, the Terminator. There was a lot of cool licensed games on it that were fun to play. So yeah, it would have been pretty cool if they had thrown some love in for the Game Gear. But it's pretty shocker rock book as it is. Um, they could have also had a top 25 Game Gear game, that would have been cool. So yeah, that's the book. Um, I'd really recommend picking this up, as you said, I've just kind of gone through it pretty quickly. Even though this video has gone on for uh, really long, I do apologise for that. Uh, I really appreciate it if you managed to stick all the way to the end of this video. Um, oh, I will cover the price of the magazine. It is a little bit expensive. It's $9.99. So, you know, it's a bit expensive in terms of a magazine. As I said, it's loosely, I use the word magazine, it's more like a small book, but it's a big old magazine slash book. And the average price of a video game magazine, I know Xbox and PlayStation ones, I think six quid. So for a few quid more, you get a load of facts, trivia, and a really cool read all about Sega's history and the games they've released, at least some of their most uh, famous ones. And, um, I had this book when I uh, went on my flight and I read through it from the first page to the last page and I had a really enjoyable time reading this so if you want to pick this up definitely hunt it out um, if you're watching this video from another country America then you might be able to pick this up online and get it imported or it may even be available to some of the online uh, retailers in America so if you've enjoyed this video then yeah definitely recommend picking this up and uh, yeah I think I've rambled on uh, long enough um, I would like to do a <coughs> another video in the future of some video games magazines as I said at the start I've got a lot of nostalgic and love for video games magazine and I've pretty much kept all the magazines I've bought since the early 90s so thank you very much for watching this video guys, especially if you made it all the way to the end. I didn't plan on this video going for this long. I think it's gone on for about 35 to 40 minutes, which is uh, pretty crazy. But uh, once I get rambling about Sega, I have a tendency not to stop. So yes, thank you very much for watching this video guys. I really do appreciate it. And if you like this video, I'd also really appreciate a thumbs up. 
and if you haven't subscribed already then yes please do subscribe I am trying my best to at least get one video review of a related topic uh, once a week <coughs> that is my goal at the moment at the moment I am keeping to that but uh, yes do bear with me it's kind of like a review a week as well as a Sonic the Comic related video so yes Thank you very much for watching this video guys, take care of yourselves and see you on the next video.